Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Emily and I talk a lot about Salesforce. We're gonna be going over record level security, what it is, how it relates to object level security and what the features are and what they do. So we can't talk about record level security without object level security. And a lot of people like to think of it as a versus where they're kind of butting heads with each other, but it's, it's really not that way. It really, they work together to create a security experience um, and they really mesh well together to be able to open up access to those who need it, but then also keep it closed down to those who don't need to see it. So let's talk a little bit about like an overview of what these two things do. So let's think of it as like a library um, at a school that you possibly went to or at college. Object level security is going to be like the library sections in that library. So sections like natural history or calculus or World War II. And these are going to be very similar to how objects work within Salesforce. So things like uh, accounts, contacts, leads, opportunities, just big sections of groupings of things or records or data. Now, records are going to be like the books that you have within those sections. So you have in the natural history section, you'll have records or books that are labeled amphibian creatures. For calculus, it might be calculus to make your head hurt. For World War II, it might be battles in France during World War II. So object level, again, it opens up access to each of the sections. Maybe you have at this fake library school situation we've got going on, you might ha only have access to the sections that you have classes for, but then you can only see the books that are related to the curriculum within the classes. And that would be record level security. So let's go ahead and jump in a little bit more. So back to Salesforce, records, are going to be things like in accounts, you might have an account for uh, Ursa Major Solar, or you might have a lead for a Jane Doe. And being able to see these different records within the record level security are going to be based upon a lot of who owns the record and who is working on that record. So let's go ahead and jump in a little bit to, to the features of record level security. Okay, so there's three main record level security features that you're going to be using. And this again, works in conjunction with the main um, object level security. So if you have record level access, you're not gonna be able to see that record unless you have access to the object. But these are the ways that after object level security is set that you can see each individual record on the leads or accounts or contacts or whatever object that you are working on. So there are three different ones are going to be role hierarchy, sharing rules, and manual sharing. So these go in order of wideness of being able to open up individual records or what is set up in necessarily like a standard way or what can be set up to be automated, I guess. But we'll get into each of these. Let's start off with the role hierarchy. So the role hierarchy is going to typically be based off of your org's structure. So it's going to be things like at the top, you've got the CEO, and then you might have um, a C-suite or VPs underneath the C-suite. And then you have like directors, and then you've got managers and then reps So for each different department. So let's think we might have three different departments. We've got sales, we've got marketing, and we've got service. So what the role hierarchy does is it allows us to share up to managers and they're their managers and their supervisors or managers. So let's say we have three reps underneath one sales manager. Typically how this would work is that any of the reps leads that they have or opportunities would be viewable by their manager and their manager's manager and their manager's manager all the way up the role hierarchy. Now, it doesn't work laterally. So if sales rep A wanted to see sales rep B's records, they wouldn't necessarily be able to see that unless they had other record level security features working in their favor. And now this works for most standard objects. So for leads uh, and opportunities, and it can be set up for custom objects as well. So now let's jump into the next one that can be used to open up records to people and that's going to be sharing rules. So there's two types of sharing rules. They're just gonna be owner-based sharing rules or criteria-based sharing rules. And sharing rules open up lots of records or a group of records um, based upon some set of rhyme or reason. So for an owner-based sharing rule, you might have um, if sales rep A 
owns a record, they're going to need product expert B to check out all of their um, opportunities or leads just so then they know what products are there and if they can help. That's kind of an owner-based sharing role. If this owner owns the record, but they also need to have this person view the record, then they can automatically share that. And then there's going to be criteria-based sharing roles. So let's say for every opportunity over $100,000, you need to share it with a specific sales coach that you have because it's a larger deal and people need to be coached on larger deals and how to close them better, faster, etc. So that's going to be criteria based where it's not based upon this person owns it. So this person needs to see it. It's more of like, oh, these specific set of rules are here and it needs to be shared with this person because it matches the criteria. Typically, they can be shared with users, they can be shared with groups, they can be shared with roles. So whatever your role is within the hierarchy or roles and subordinates. So if sales manager A needs to have some records shared with all of their sales reps, then they would be able to do that. And then we have manual sharing. Manual sharing is typically going to be a one-off sharing situation that may or may not have a rhyme or reason, but it's going to be need to be shared just once or twice. And this can be shared with users, groups, roles, roles and subordinates when you are deciding who to share it with. And typically this is going to be on the record page where nearby where you can edit the record. A good example of manual sharing is let's take the example of the sales coach. Let's say that the opportunity was like $99,000 and it was close enough to $100,000 that we just needed a sales coach to help out. You could manually share it with that sales coach that you needed help from and quickly get that assistance. And it wouldn't necessarily be under the criteria based because it is under $100,000, but it's close enough that we can just share it this one time. So that is going to be manual sharing. And with that, that is kind of an overview of record level security. Again, record level security works in harmony with object level security. So if you don't have access to leads, you're not going to be able to see any of leads regardless of what your record level security is. If you don't have access to opportunities, same thing, you're not going to be able to look at those records or in the library example, you're not going to be able to look at the books in that section if you don't have access to that section. But I hope that you found this video helpful. If you did, be sure to give it a like, subscribe. You can check out the courses down below in the description box or on Salesforce Upskill. You can connect with me on LinkedIn and Twitter at Emily Call MBA. Thank you so much and I'll catch you guys in the next one.